All right, everyone, we are back. Brand new episode of the Cabral Concept and a brand new case study. Today's, stud today's case study, I want to go over what happens to many individuals under chronic stress and specifically uh, if they are stressed and they are skipping meals. So again, I'm not saying to you that uh, you are necessarily one of these people, but I can share with you for sure, you're able to find out and what happens uh, if you are producing larger amounts of stress hormones and what happens then to all your great hormones such as uh, estrogen and progesterone for women, and even testosterone for women as well, and testosterone uh, for men. So let's go over that. So what I want to share with you first is the actual lab, and then I would love to share with you why this happens inside of the human body. So if you want to see the lab, you can head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2588, or just tune into our YouTube channel, and it's just my name, Stephen Cabral, that's Stephen with the PH. So what we have here is a 43-year-old male. I took out their, I basically, I just redacted the entire lab. You'll see it was obviously a, a recent lab. And um, this is someone who's in great shape. They're at a great weight and healthy BMI. Like, everything is good, right? So he, this is interesting, though, because when we look at their lab, and again, if you're not watching this on video, no problem at all. I can just talk you through it as well without seeing it. They ran this lab just like they do every year. So every single year, they run their big five labs. And one of the big five labs is the stress, mood, and metabolism. Well, here's the thing. A year ago, they ran it, and they had cortisol in the morning of 7.4. Now, it should be between a 6 and 9. So 7.4 is perfect. Their cortisol at noon uh, last year, right before lunch, it should be between about a 1.5 and, and a 2.5. And they were 1.5. Cortisol in the evening, right before dinner, should be somewhere around a 1 to a 1.5. There were 1.9, so a little bit up there. And then at night, uh, you want it between a 0.4 and a 1. And ideally, you want it more like 0.4 to 0.6, and they were 0.6. So their cortisol last year was a total of about an 11, and you want your total cortisol output for the day of between like a 9 and 13. And so they were perfect, right? They had done the work, trust me. Like this person's been working with me for um, years, no more autoimmune issues. Uh, I won't go through all the different issues of this individual, but they're a healthy, happy individual, and now they're doing some really advanced, uh, what you might call biohacking-based work. So um, what we do every year is no matter what, even if they're feeling well, we still run those big five labs. So we ran their big five labs, and lo and behold, we saw estrogen. So I'm going to take you through the whole thing right now. So their estrogen was a 1.5. For men, we really want it between 0.5 and 1.2. I don't want it to get up to the 1.5. Um, this person has a history of converting more testosterone to estrogen, which can lead to more weight gain, uh, water retention, puffiness, for, you know, for more for men, uh, and sometimes lower mood. Their progesterone was a 77. Nothing wrong with progesterone for, as a 77 for men, but typically we're looking at that sub 50. Their testosterone, here's where it gets interesting. Men in their 40s, I want that testosterone between 90 and 110. No lower than 90, and typically 110. Now, some people's might be higher. That's the limit naturally, like right around there. Again, I work with men. Some of them are 120, 130, 140 in their 40s. Like that's okay. Um, but we, we know normal is between 90 and 110. By the way, this is a saliva-based hormone test, all right? So saliva-based is different than your blood work at your PCP. This shows free hormone, and that is what's most important, actually usable hormone, right? Okay, so their DHE, this person's DHEA, I wanted above a six, and they were an 8.8. .8. Okay, so these look pretty good. The problem was their testosterone was a 69. So their testosterone is a good 10, or a good 30 points lower than I want it, right? I want them 90 to 110. And too much of that testosterone is converting to estrogen. I'll share with that how that's happening in just a moment. Now, here's where it gets more interesting. Their cortisol, it was normal a year ago. Now they're at a nine in the morning. We want it six to nine, right? So that's right at that top end. Cortisol should not be higher than really a two and a half at noon. It's a 4.1. Cortisol in the evening should not really be higher than a at maximum one and a half, really, that's what I wanted at. This person's a 2.9, right? So they're double, like they're basically double all of these. And then, except for their AM morning one, and the cortisol in the evening should be 0.4 to 0.6 max, and they're a 1.4. So now here's the interesting thing. This person feels great. They sleep well. Everything is good. All of their um, wearable devices look good. The problem is, and I asked this individual, 
everything looks good. What is going on? And they said, well, you know, and so just a lot of back and forth. What's changed? I always ask for the different variables. Unbeknownst to me, because again, like I'm not there to try to control my clients' lives. That's not what I do. I help them maximize their life, their health, their happiness. I'm not there to control it. I'm there to work with them and however they see fit. So this person uh, has started skipping breakfast and they started doing an AM walk, which nothing wrong with that, that's great. But then also an AM workout, sauna, cold plunge, and then not eating until after that. Now, what we have in a year, or again, they just started this over the last couple months, so it hasn't been that long, but you, now you see this elevated cortisol throughout the day. And so I shared with them, your total now, let's add it up, 13, three more, 16, 17 and a half. So that the total output of units per day, nanograms per milliliter of cortisol, is 17 and a half. We don't want it higher than a maximum of 13 for the day, so they're producing a lot of cortisol. All right, you might say, well, why does that matter? Well, cortisol is a stress hormone. Obviously, it is reacting. Typically, cortisol will react to uh, mental, emotional pain, anguish, right? Physical pain, injuries, uh, a lot of caffeine or stress on the body in any way, shape, or form. Could be inflammatory stress, could be anything like that. Well, this person's stress, since they're feeling well, they're doing well, is the fasted workout. They are not a big kapha-based body type. They're a leaner body type. And what they're seeing now is an overproduction of cortisol, the stress hormone. So we were wondering why we sometimes saw a little bit of a fasted, uh, elevated glucose level. Well, now we know. This stress hormone, cortisol, is producing more, well, it is a glucocorticoid, producing more break da breaking down of glycogen, stored sugar in the liver, leading to then elevated levels of glucose, oftentimes without even needing all those extra carbohydrates. So, but the bigger thing with this individual was they didn't find themselves able to put on as much muscle, keep as much muscle on, and now we know why. This person's testosterone, we've run it on a different lab. Um, it isn't half, I shouldn't say that, but it's only two-thirds of what it was a year ago. And when we're looking at this, we say, well, you know, this person should just start using testosterone replacement therapy, but that's actually not the case at all. Because if you were to use testosterone replacement therapy, it would be more of a conventional medicine uh, pharmaceutical approach than rather than figuring out the underlying root cause. And my goal for you is to always, listen, you can take TRT if you want, or you can take estrogen or progesterone or whatever it is that you want, but know why. And there's an underlying root cause. This person could just keep on keeping on, just run their testosterone with a functional medicine doctor, and they're like, oh, it's low, okay, we're just gonna put you on TRT. But they never would have known that their current lifestyle is actually producing too much stress hormone, which can then lead to what? Well, eventually, uh, neurodegenerative diseases, like maybe Parkinson's or MS or uh, autoimmune issues from the stress, like rheumatoid arthritis or AK or AS, I should say, um, or what about Alzheimer's, right? Like all of these things matter. And so my goal is to say, uh, what I want you to do is understand that although intermittent fasting, I'm a huge advocate of it, how much is right for you? Like that's the bigger thing. And then also, you know, should you be doing fasted workouts, you know, HIIT-based training with your uh, trainer, your virtual trainer? Should you be doing sauna fasted? Should you be doing all these things fasted first thing in the morning? So if, they, if this individual likes their schedule, which I know they do, all we're doing is then not having them do, we're having them do their, their walk fasted, that's okay, because we're checking their glucose. But then what we're going to do is we're actually gonna have them have breakfast, an easy to digest smoothie, which they were doing in the past. They loved, they just wanted to try something different. And I don't fault people for wanting to try something different. There's nothing wrong with that. But we, the, again, the proof, as they say, is in the pudding. It's also why I want other clinicians and health professionals to just be careful with making blanket recommendations. If you have not run a client or patient's labs, and I'm talking about a full panel, not just testosterone, right, or not just cortisol in the morning, because if you ran this individual's cortisol in just the morning with just blood work, you would never know that they had elevated cortisol throughout the day because you need to run it four times throughout the day. And it's as simple as spitting into a tube, literally, it's just saliva. And it's the, it's the most accurate way of actually looking at free cortisol and free testosterone and free hormones. So now you could say like, well, how can this be? How can elevated cortisol lower 
sex hormones. And this goes for women as well. This isn't, I'm just giving you a male case study, but I gave a presentation last week and I'll be doing that at our October event. I'll be giving this presentation um, in October. I'll just, I'll just tweak it just a little bit uh, with Ecolife, our community. But this is what leads to chronic-based, low mood, low energy, low libido, uh, and low immunity, like th- without a doubt, this crashes your hormones. And I'll do another case study. I'll actually, I don't want to give it away because I want to give you the presentation and you know, this coming October, and I know it's a, a ways away, but, um, but it really shows you what chronic stress does to the body. And so I want to show you a little diagram. And, and again, so I, um, this person is still doing intermittent fasting. I'll get to that in just a moment. But what we have here is just the steroid hormone pathway. Um, I teach this inside of level two of the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, but vitamin B5, uh, pentothetic acid, is basically just a precursor for acetyl coenzyme A, and then cholesterol, and then our LDL, so our uh, low density level proteins, become pregnenolone. Okay, so now if the body's relaxed and it's in you know a parasympathetic state, rest and relax, it's going to become DHEA that just says dihydroepiandrosterone, and we're not going to get into this deep, right? But DHEA, you can see it right over here, DHEA, right? Okay. Then uh, becomes testosterone. Um, and testosterone right here can then move down to estradiol, right? And estradiol then has three forms of uh, estrogen total, which is estrone, estriol, or estriol, and estradiol, all right? So this is basically just your estrogen, and this goes for women as well. Again, it goes DHEA to estrogen, DHEA to androstene diol to testosterone. So like, again, like it's just, I'm not gonna go in depth in this. If, you, if this interests you and you wanna learn about hormonal pathways and how to improve your own labs as well as that of your family and, and even start a career in health coaching, you can check out the uh, integrativehealthpractitioner.org. It's just, uh, you can also go to ihp.coach. But um, look, this is very interesting. So back in the day, we called this like the pregnenolone steel. Now it's, it's more of a theory. So now we look, all right, all right, so pregnenolone can go to DHEA, testosterone, estrogen, or it can move over to progesterone and then down to cortisol. This is the stress hormone. So in times of stress, basically the body is saying we need to produce more stress hormone. So progesterone often falls in women. Uh, and then we eventually see DHEA fall and estrogen can be normal. It's at the very end of basically the hormone flow. But we know that this happens. What's debated in science right now is not that this happens. Again, like as a clinical practitioner who has run more than 100,000 labs, this is what happens. I'm, just, I'm showing you right here. This is not abnormal by any stretch of the imagination. Like this is, this is what happens. It's not, we don't want it to happen, but this is a normal physiological property is when your stress hormones go up, your sex hormones go down. And it leads to low energy, low mood, low metabolism, low libido, low drive, if it goes on long enough, okay? And then eventually low immunity, inflammation, and it can lead to other issues as well. Okay, so that's, that's basically one part of disease pathology. Now, the other part though, is we can either say that basically the hormone is being stolen to make more cortisol, or the body is simply shutting down a lot of the non-essential properties under greater levels of stress. And so again, whatever theory is correct does not matter. The end result is exactly the same. When cortisol levels go up, sex hormones over time go down. Initially, they can all spike. Right? Again, we teach that. That's more the alarm phase of stress. But chronic stress literally destroys the metabolism, slows resting metabolic rate, as I just showed in the Biggest Loser study just about a week or two ago, and I invite you to check that out as well. But this is important. I mean, this is real things to look at, and this is why I invite you, if you... If you are thinking there might be an issue with your overall metabolism or energy. This is just one lab. It's called the Stress, Mood, and Metabolism Lab. Um, I can link up to it today. If you go to stevencabral.com forward slash 2588, you can run the lab yourself. But also, it's part of the big five. And that's something that you should really run every single year, regardless of blood work. Blood work is amazing to run, but it does not show you the underlying root causes of what may actually be leading to any of the symptoms you're feeling. And again, even in a healthy individual, you, I run my big five labs every single year. I run them every March. And that's my birthday month. And so I always say, listen, during this month, I'm going to run all my labs and I'm going to do it every single year just to make sure that I'm in good health. I continue to be in good health. And if there's any deficiencies, I'm going to bring them up. 
And if there's any toxicities, well, I'm going to help remove them. Like that, that's it. That's the bottom line. So that's my goal. I just wanted to share this with you here today. Is intermittent fasting right for everyone? Um, well, yeah, basically it is. It really is. Like 99 out of 100 people, those people dealing with um, chronic fatigue syndrome, Addison's disease, reactive hypoglycemia, well, they might need a little something before bed. Sure, but that's, that's temporary, three to six months until they're able to overcome that. Uh, but most people, yeah, 12, 14, 16 hours per day for sure intermittent fasting is. So now an individual like this though, okay, well, they have a busy morning. Like literally they're doing a workout and it's not aiding their body. Like this is not helpful. It's not going to lead to longevity. It's certainly not going to lead to good metabolism. So we have them finishing their dinner uh, by 5.36 every night because they do. Like they have it in their mindset that they want to do a 16 hour fast uh, basically every day. Okay. So we're just going to end it earlier. And they're not going to do their workout basically then until uh, 10 a.m. in the morning. So they're going to stop eating at 6. They get six hours till midnight. Um, they've got till 10 a.m. 10 a.m. is when they'll start their workout. And right before that, they're actually going to drink their smoothie. So they're going to get nutrients in their body. They're going to reduce those cortisol levels. Uh, they're going to supply their body with the nutrients that it needs. So it's not in a survival state. So it's not dropping into low blood sugar. And, uh, and they're going to get all the benefits. And so, you know, that's the thing is like, I just want to share with people, there is no all-for-one approach. You really, if, if possible, you want a bio-individualized um, method for you, a precision methodology for your nutrition, your supplementation, your overall lifestyle. Uh, and IHP Level 2 can help you with this. You can find practitioners at integrativehealthpractitioner.org, or you can work with our team uh, by just going over to stephencabral.com forward slash labs, or even this lab alone is stephencabral.com forward slash hormones dash test, or... You can work with your local um, naturopathic doctor. Like it's, like it's whatever works for you. I just want you to know that this is available for you. This is the future of medicine. Um, this is the future of true health and it's here. And so again, we're not looking here to provide any diagnosis of any disease. We're actually looking to go way deeper than that and show you exactly how disease may manifest in the first place. So again, hopefully this was helpful. Um, I thank you. I appreciate your support of the Cabral concept. Do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could help. And uh, all those show notes will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2588. And you can even download this lab if you'd like. All right. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing day. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.